If you got timber on your property and you want to make it more productive for deer, turkey, and quail, I'm going to show you how. Well, welcome back to another episode of The Hunting Grounds. As you know, land management is a huge part of what we do here on The Hunting Grounds. We like to show you educational videos on management techniques that we're using on our property that works for us, so hopefully you guys can use them on your very own hunting grounds. Well, as you can tell, back behind me was once a really wooded hillside. It was completely wooded when I bought it, I don't know, three and a half years ago or so, and over the last uh, two seasons, it's turned into this. It's now almost like a tree savanna. As you can see, it's sparsely populated with white oaks and red oaks, even a few walnuts here and there, and even some hickories down through this area. Well, here in the Ozarks, we have nice, steep, rocky hillsides. And once the trees grow up and they mature, it pretty much turns into a timber desert. And by what I mean there is that you have this huge canopy that's way up there that's pretty much eliminating anything else from growing down low. If there is anything, it's pretty much browsed very quickly. There's no cover, there's no browse. It just is an open timber underneath. So pre-colonization of the humans, before we came in and started controlling wildfires, wildfires would rip through here and really would have opened this up and burned a lot of trees and kept the vegetation down. So you probably wouldn't have had this huge canopy of timber all over the place here in the Ozarks. And so what I'm trying to do is try to create some more of that savanna. By doing that, by coming in, taking out a majority of these trees, it opens up the canopy. And as you can tell, the undergrowth just flourishes. There's blackberries, there's raspberries, there's saplings, there's grasses and forbs and everything that is growing underneath here. But it creates a smorgasbord of food and cover for deer, turkey, and quail that was not there before. So it's gonna help hold deer right there on your property because they have the cover, they have the food, but it's also gonna support larger populations because you have the food to support them. So I really wanted to dive in and do a more in-depth management series this year. So it's more like a getting real management series. And in order to do that, I'm gonna be taking around my POV camera, which is the GoPro, and I'm gonna be walking back through here and show you specifically what I look for so you guys can do this at home. So you can prove your habitat on your property so much with a single tank of gas in your chainsaw. It's just absolutely unreal. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you around, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm looking for, what trees I'm leaving, what trees I'm cutting down, how I'm laying them down, and then show you just anything that I can that I look at when I walk through an area like this. So you can utilize these techniques whether you have two acres, 100 acres, or thousands of acres. It's something that everybody can do and everybody can benefit from. So with that being said, I wanna put my dry shots on the ground and start hiking back up in here. It's kind of a wooly mess right now, but I'm gonna show you how that's gonna change here pretty soon. So it doesn't get any more real than this. I'm gonna go through every single thing that I see and just hopefully you guys can jump right in to the mind of Steve, which might be a little scary, uh, but I'm gonna try to show you guys how I see the woods when I walk into them. So what I'm walking down right now, let me show you is a logging road that I've cut in here. I think this is great to do on any property that you manage is to have accessibility. This is great to access this big holler that's down here because here in the Ozarks, as you know, any deer you shoot are gonna run downhill. That allows us to pick them up pretty easy, but also this provides a great fire break. It's very easy to come back in here, blow the leaves out of here, and after I am done, which I'm pretty much done now, cutting this savanna out, I wanna do prescribed burn up through here, and I have this nice fire break through here. On this side, it's not very much further down in there before I start getting to my property boundary. As you can see, this is still full canopy everywhere over there. Down low, you have saplings, nothing else, just a bunch of leaves and uh, saplings down in there. So it's pretty much a biological desert. Not a whole lot of browse, except if they wanna go in there and browse on some twigs. Now, if you hop over, I've started this, um, like I said, two seasons ago. I just recently went through and even cleaned up uh, and took out some more trees down through here. But even in one year's time, look how many briars you have up in here. You have grasses, there's little forbs popping up all over the place, a lot of new saplings, a lot of browse. And when I was back up in here the other day, up on that hillside over there, for one, there's a lot of trails through here. It's one thing you won't see over here. Deer activity is very high over here, 
not over here. There's a lot of deer beds up in here because that also provides a lot of thermal regulation. There's a lot for them to back up to, especially in these cold months. And as you can tell today, we're right here, it's 30 degrees out. Well, you, as you can tell, the sun's facing down right here more on the southern kind of hill slope. So uh, deer love to bed on this thing, especially in those cold winter days. All right. Leave my other camera there. I'm going to pop up here and show you guys exactly some of the stuff I'm looking at. One thing I like to do, because it really adds no value to your property whatsoever, is come in and take out the cedars. I've taken out the cedars a couple seasons ago. There are still a few here and there. You can tell there's a lot of brown splotches you're probably seeing on the screen. Those are all cedars. They're primarily up there on the edge but really creates a biological desert underneath these things. They just don't let much water hit the ground. There's no thermal regulation from them. There's not much browse opportunity or anything for deer that's beneficial. So I like to take those out because it really just inhibits a lot of growth from taking place. But I will tell you when I'm cutting, if these trees are going through the growth season, I like to come in here with the tort on and I like to cut the stump and I like to spray it. That gets a good kill. So a lot of people are like, why would you come in and kill the stump? Because if you don't, kill it it's going to regenerate a lot of growth that's a lot of browse right there and it's tender growth for the deer yes and i agree with that and so i leave about 50 percent of it maybe maybe sometimes even less than that unsprayed for that reason but what you have to think about if you come in here and you cut this tree down 100 percent of that root system is still alive down there still got all that nutrients and uh, supplies down in there that it's going to try to regenerate and it's also still going to compete with everything so that root base goes everywhere out in the ground through here which is going to be competing with nutrients and water from all your plants that you're wanting to promote so especially in those hot summer months especially on a south facing hill slope right here in the ozarks where it's really rocky well-drained soil i don't want that much competition so i will come in here and do that also if you are not really comfortable on doing prescribed burns and following up and prescribed burning through here managing these stumps uh, could become a hassle down the road because they are still going to grow and they will grow another tree and so if you come in here and spray them you don't have to do prescribed burn to follow up through here because they're 100 percent dead at that point i like to cut them pretty low for one when you do a prescribed burn it's going to be able to basically cover that stump in that area the higher you cut it the quicker it's going to be able to grow out of reach of the deer because if you cut it high you don't spray it's going to regenerate and some of these trees can grow three feet or even more in a season and by that time the browse is out of the deer's reach so it's doing no good at that point so i like to cut it as low as i can without cutting into the rocks but as you can tell it gets to be a lot of undergrowth especially closer up to the edge that we get because i did some edge feathering early on before i did the savannah kind of project and so i've got that transition zone up there of all those grasses and forbs and briars and everything coming in to this now savannah, which then transitions into pure hardwoods just across this little four-wheeler trail. Talk about being a real climb this hillside, sprint up it with the cameras, get out of breath. And then I'm like ready to film, but can't breathe. Whew. So I know this is gonna be a question, so I'm gonna go ahead and address it. That's a lot of trees that's down. Yes, I get that. A lot of people are gonna argue that's a lot of value down there. I like to try to go in and evaluate what I've got. Now I want pretty quick results because I want to make sure that I open up enough canopy that it does do its job down here. Because if you leave too many trees, you still have that canopy, it's gonna struggle. And uh, you want to make sure that you cut enough. So that's one thing that you gotta factor in is make sure you cut enough. At the same time, I do log my property periodically and so I don't want to cut down trees that are going to be valuable in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I want to have those trees. But I also am going to cut down the trees, too, that are not as valuable to the deer. So like hickory and some of these post oaks are not as valuable as the red oaks and the white oaks that are in this area. Now, also, as you can tell, there are some walnut trees I left because they're pretty straight. And whether it be my lifetime or not, they're going to be a good valued log. Going in here, if I am cutting down white oaks and red oaks and post oaks, I'm going to take trees that are not going to be valuable as far as lumber, too. They're going to be crooked. They're going to be rotten. They're going to be tops dead already, which is an indicator that they're probably 
some kind of disease or rotten or even hollow on the inside. I'm cutting down hickories that are completely crooked, stuff that's not gonna be any kind of value for one, for logging, for two, for wildlife. Now there is a lot of wood in here that could potentially be firewood. You can get friends to come in here, cut out what they want. Some of the areas that I do this, I actually drag up a lot of the wood and we cut it for ourselves and we have some of our friends come up and cut it. So you can do that as well. But I don't have the time to do that for all the hundreds of trees that I've probably cut in this area. All right, so here's something that's important that I really wanna point out because uh, not a lot of people are gonna think of this. As I mentioned, I'm gonna do a prescribed burn up this hill. What I'll do is I'll start a back burn on the upper crest of this hill where I have a road. Let it back burn a little bit and I'm gonna let a fire come up and meet that and it should be a pretty hot, pretty quick burn. Here's something that not a lot of people are gonna think about is some of your dead trees. You're gonna think, all right, I've got a dead tree that has no branches and it's standing, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it because it really doesn't mess with the canopy much. Well, if you're gonna come in and prescribe burn, you can see I cut it down right here, that could catch fire. Could burn for days, could burn for hours, but what's gonna happen, especially here on a hill like this, it's gonna burn. Once that base burns through, it's gonna fall. Now, whether it falls and slides or falls and rolls or may just fall and be in place, it could fall, slide and roll all the way down this hill past the fire break and into the trees that I'm not burning at this point and could start a fire that I don't know about. So anytime I'm coming through and I'm just doing TSI and I'm gonna create a savanna or do t just timber stand improvement, I am gonna go ahead and come in and cut down the dead trees just in case I go through there and do prescribed burn. So onward we go. All right, so now I'm at the top side where this hill meets my food plot here. I just want to show you guys this change because it's drastic from when I got this property. This line that you can see here was once pure hardwoods. It literally went from field edge to just pure hardwoods. You could walk through there. You could see all the way down this hill slope and look at it now. <laughs> the amount of vegetation in here is crazy. There's a lot of deer browse. They bed up in here. There's trails down through here. You have all the sassafras. They love browsing on sassafras. You even have some new buds on there. All these grasses and thermal regulation and cover is just absolutely insane. One cool fact about my property is you could not find a rabbit on it at all when I got it. And it was because they had had horses before. Any of the fields were over browsed. The trees were just a, a biological desert. There's nothing underneath it. There was no brush. There was no cover for even rabbits, let alone deer or quail or anything like that. And so you did not find a rabbit for two years. I never saw a rabbit, not on a single trail camera, not driving around at night, not sitting in the stand for hours upon hours upon hours. Never saw a rabbit until uh, just like a year, year and a half ago. You build the cover, they're going to come in. And that's the best thing to do if you're dealing even with high predation on your property. Animals know how to protect themselves. They know how to hide themselves. And if you have the cover, they can do that. <laughs> a rabbit in an environment where it has no cover to hide is a dead rabbit. But now it's got tons of habitat, tons of food, tons of cover. And if you manage for like rabbits and quail, everything else on the food chain is going to benefit from it. So we've got some pretty cool habitat here. See all the black raspberries and blackberries back up in there. Now this has been done for a little bit because this is where I edge feathered. So this is this is two years in the making here and we're gonna come through, prescribe burn it. It's gonna open it up a little bit more, uh, probably produce a little bit more grasses and uh, kind of clean it up a little bit because you can still kind of see a lot of that down brush from when I edge feathered this almost two years ago now. Got a lot of browse actually on that black raspberry bush right there. Got a nice bed right here. That bed's not even 30 yards from my driveway. And I don't know, 180 yards, 200 yards from the house right there. But even if you have a house and you have a shop on a small piece of property, you're gonna be able to greatly increase the amount of time the deer spend on your property and grow on your property. All right, so now I'm gonna show you an area that's been about two and a half years in the making. And it butts right up 
against the savannah that I just recently worked on. The winds are picking up a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't mess up too much on the mic, but this is the area two and a half years ago. It's one of the first projects I did on this property came in and I did a pretty aggressive timber cut right here in this area. And primarily, probably 90% of it was all blackjack. And I went through and I left a majority of the red oaks and there were a few white oaks up in here. And I cut the stumps kind of high because at the time when I was going through cutting down so many trees, I'm talking in this half acre acre area, there was just an absolute ton of blackjacks, which in this area, blackjacks don't produce very much. They're just a hard tree. They aren't really great for much of anything. And even the acorns are small and it's kind of like the last acorns that the deer are going to eat period if they get around to eating those and so to really open up this canopy i came in i cut out those blackjacks because i was cutting down so many blackjacks i figured it saved me time and i came in i didn't cut them down at the base and this is where it goes into what i talked about earlier i cut them just below waist high because it was easier to do with the chainsaw to come in and follow them quickly but look exactly what it does right here so now that's a little bit below waist height it sheared off there but now where it started to grow it is now uh, eight or nine foot tall up there. Even if the deer wanted to browse on this where there's nothing that they really even want to browse on, it is now out of their reach. And this is still zapping nutrients and moisture from the soil. It is now starting to produce its own canopy, which goes against everything that I came in here and started doing this for. So if I would have cut that down at the base, I've already prescribed burn this once, it probably would have come in and zapped this because it would have had all that nutrients coming out and it would have come through and burnt all the new growth which would have pretty much starved the tree but instead now i have to come back in here and either hack spray this and kill it or uh, cut it and spray it or cut it and do prescribed burn through here i'm so impressed on how this area has performed i learned a lot in this area especially with the stumps and whatnot but just look at the amount of wild blueberries that are in this area. And yes, they are wild blueberries. Um, you can come in here now that we've done prescribed burn and stuff. It's created just the perfect environment for these things. And they're tiny. And you'll spend hours and never accumulate much. <laughs> the, hardly even enough to put in a pancake mix. But oh my gosh, they are so good. Right up here on top of this hill is uh, a food plot that if you would have stood up there 25 yards, a couple of years ago, you would have seen all the way down through here. Now, if you're even down on the ground level as a deer, there is even no way that you can even get close to seeing that food plot or standing. And that's where my driveway runs right beside. So it really creates a ton of cover, especially right up against the food plot. Here's the deer's view. If you're like, here's my point of view. If you're a deer, you're probably gonna be about this level here. Look how much cover it already creates and this is without any greenery here's another thing that's really cool too this ends up being a spot that they really like to hang out especially late season this is a more it's about one of the most south facing hill slopes i've got it's more of a south westerly hill slope but look at the amount of grasses and stuff that are even down in here sure a lot of it's sage grass there's some sassafras saplings over there so much thermal regulation can happen right here. It's just they're going to be protected from the wind. They're going to get that nice warm sun right there on them. And it's pretty dang impressive. Let me show you how thick this stuff is. You get down on a deer's level in here or even bedded down. It's thick. Whoa. Don't fall. Got some bucks spending some time in here. So there you go. There's a rubbed all up and down there it's actually pretty fresh still right there on the little plum tree but this actually transitions right into the other area that i had done the timber stand improvement the savannah it transitions right into it so here pretty soon i'm going to update you guys with a video and i'm actually going to be doing a prescribed burn in this whole area show you the before show you the after and i'll show you the progress throughout the year but i can promise there's probably gonna be some turkeys in here there's gonna be fawns bedded all in here this year and rabbits and and hopefully even down the line we'll get some quail in here but 
this area has performed great and I'm really just looking forward to updating you guys on how this area produces and turns out. Believe it or not, I'm not even, I'm at my level right now, but there is a soft sided redneck stand up there about 40 yards away. If you're on a deer's level, you don't even know that's in the world. Before I would have been able to see that and more. Used to be able to see my house from in here in the woods. I'd see my house all day long and you <laughs> fat chance of that now. I wish you guys could come put some boots on the ground right here and really take this in and see it and just see how this actually performs and just changes your property. Let me point out one last thing. When you're going in here and you're cutting this timber down, it's kind of against human nature to kind of make it messy and to leave it lay, but you aren't doing it for you. You're doing it for the benefit of the deer and what the deer like. And they like that messy, that brush, that cover, that vegetation all on their level. And I always tell people when you're going in and you're doing a timber stand improvement, you'll always want to cut a little bit more than you think, because I can promise if you don't do that, you're going to go in there and you're going to cut and go, man, I've done a lot, especially if you aren't used to doing it. I cut out a lot. It's really going to grow in here. And the thing is, you didn't cut out enough because it's just human nature to kind of go, I think this is too much when you need to go another 10 or 20% more on top of that. That's my big tip. If you're going to get out here and it's your first time doing timber stand improvement, you really want to open up that canopy, do what kind of puts you on edge, get to that point and do another 10 or 20% on top of that. Because all you're going to do is if you don't do that, you're going to be coming back in, cutting out more trees and falling yourself back up and producing more work for yourself when you can get in there and do it right the first time. There's so much animal activity in a place like this where there was almost zero before where did i put my camera <laughs> make your property so thick that even a camera can hide it i literally thought i lost it That would have been an expensive mistake. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the Getting Real Management series. I want to do this more in depth on every single topic that we ever cover right here on the hunting grounds. If you guys have topics you want us to cover, just comment down below. If you like this more real life POV, educational camera kind of angle, then be sure to comment that down below too, because I'm always looking to change it up and benefit you guys as much as I possibly can. So anyway, comment down below, make sure you subscribe, give a big thumbs up, and until next time, have a better than average day. Won't you take